healthcare physically not spent. In the cases of the foreign schools, those uh, school programs which is loads of don't know about teaching users and practical education skills and uh, uh, and it's a very successful project, well you would actually have to take on an additional ranger to actually do spend the whole money, the lot of the time within the two year life cycle of the project. And in the health case of the healthy uh, health outcomes fund, the the uh, housing department met all of the applications for grants for installation and all the other really worthy projects of cozy homes, initiatives, et etc. carried out. So they were physically not able to spend all of the money. So quite rightly, and there were 14 other projects in the in the appendix in the in the capital report that uh, 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 were in a similar position. Quite quite like, rightly, this money has been returned to the public health team. The money has gone nowhere in answer to Stuart's question in his uh, in his in his comments. The money's, the money's gone back into the public health pot, and at the end of the, uh, the financial year, the public health team will do an evaluation of all of these projects and will make recommendations to cabinet, probably in about July time of next year, <laughs> as to which of these projects can go forward. Now, um, it may, um, I mean, so the answer might be yes, the project is successful, the funds are still there in the public health team's budget, and we can use to continue them, or no projects not as been successful as it was before, or continue the pilot project, and the money can at least be used for other projects for achieve public health outcomes. Now, in the case of the borough schools, um, we heard that before they that there have been indications that a number of schools might be prepared to pay for them because they seem to be very successful. And in the case of the Healthy Homes project, uh, we were told that they secured now substantial um, amounts of the capital funding, so maybe not be public health money next year. But what what will what will definitely happen is there will be a further report to Cabinet, there will be an evaluation of all of these projects. And we will, we will make recommendations so that we can make sure that this money uh, A is used wrongly and B does achieve the public health outcomes um, to which they've been uh, to which they've been dedicated. So to reiterate, I don't believe that anyone will lose out as a result of this funding coming back to the public health team. It's come back for the reasons I have explained. And we'll have a full report once the evaluation has been completed. So um, I, I really do think that uh, with respect to you know, Kelly is, is creating a, a controversy out of one that doesn't exist here. It's an eminently sensible uh, course of action that the officers have taken. Uh, and I think to suggest that some kind of conspiracy or some kind of mischief is it, just palpable nonsense to great respect to Kelly. So I would recommend uh, Mr. Mayor that the council endorses the original council position. Thank you. Yeah.
a lack of appreciation for the benefits of small schools. Moreover, a clear distaste for them pervades through this council. And the same old excuse of economies of scale is marched out as a rather pathetic imitation of clear rationale. Mr. Mayor, Lindell is not just a small school. It's a small school which caters for some of the most vulnerable children in our community. It was truly heart-wrenching, and I defy anyone who was there to deny this, to hear the distress in the voices of the parents who have suffered this muddled, inadequate, and quite frankly, sham of a process. But through their distress, they were able to articulate yet again their case for the school to remain open better than any advocate could. They exposed the lunacy of the administration's argument that provision which has not yet been established could be as good as Lindale, if not better. Indeed, the distinct lack of any evidence presented to the coordinating committee in support of this submission was stark. All we had, Mr. Mayor, was a report from who the council unilaterally appointed and unilaterally termed an independent expert. Despite the parents being ambushed with this report, following the closure of the consultation, the parents again at the calling committee deconstructed and demolished the arguments of those who were in favour of closure. Mr Mayor, it's quite clear that officers have presumed that provision will be better if some place in, uh, in between the, the two other schools, but there are no clear plans. Why are we asking the parents to take this gamble? Why are we asking them to make this leap of faith when surely we must recognise that certainty and stability are crucial for these families? Mr Mayor, we should listen to the real experts in this debate. That's the parents and staff of the Indale School. I hope members will reflect carefully and support the minority report this evening. And before I take my seat, Mr Mayor, I do know that there has been an amendment moved by Councillor Gilchrist and Councillor Mitchell. I'm happy to accept that as a friendly amendment, Mr Mayor.